characteristics of this sentence completion question. First off, you will have to fill in missing words of a sentence, so sentence completion. And really, these gaps, these missing words, could appear anywhere in the sentence, but they're most likely going to be at the end. Our example today will feature this example. So you'll read the sentence and then you'll have to fill in the end of the sentence. Really, the strategy is the same, whether or not your gaps are at the end or in the sentence. So don't worry, the strategy we use today can be used with all sentence completion questions. So this is the main goal of this question. Secondly, the answers are most likely going to come in order. This is a great thing about the listening prompts. You have to listen for something in order, but it sort of clears up any confusion. A lot of times, students who don't practice beforehand just assume that the answers can come in any order, similar to the reading exercises, but we are lucky in that the listening offers everything in order, most likely. Third, like I said earlier in the introduction, you're going to have to come up with the answers. I have this in quotations because you're not really pulling it out of thin air. You're using the keywords that are in your sentences and also in the listening prompt. So you're not just writing anything. You're going to use things that you hear. But still, it makes students a bit nervous because they actually have to write out a certain number of words. So of course, we're going to use the scanning technique. If you are familiar with the IELTS reading strategy, scanning techniques are commonly used for keywords. So instead of reading everything, or in this case, listening for every single detail, we're going to listen for certain elements of the listening, which we will gather from the sentences that we will be given in the exercise. Okay, and lastly, for this specific question type, we're going to utilize grammar techniques. This just makes sense because if you have a whole sentence, in some cases, you can assume what type of word is missing, whether it's a noun, an adjective, a verb. These are the most common types of words that you'll have to write. So if you take some time to understand what the grammar is like in our sentences, we sort of eliminate any doubt when we have to write our answers. So these are the characteristics and features of the sentence completion questions. Now we're going to look at a step-by-step -step guide, and this is what we will use in our step-by-step -step example. So here we are with our overview. Okay, we're going to remember this when we approach our step-by-step -step example in just a bit. The first thing we're going to do, obviously, is read the sentences. We never want to just listen blindly and then read the sentences as we are listening. This is never a good idea. So you'll have about 20 seconds before the listening prompt is played. And in this case, you'll have to quickly read the sentences and then underline your keywords. Now, I have these as two separate steps, but with time and practice, you can combine these two steps. So you underline and read all at once. And don't worry, this is definitely feasible. Today, we're just separating it so that we are clear on each step. So once we've done that, still within our 20 seconds, we're going to briefly understand the grammar that is missing. So like I said, it could be a noun, a verb, an adjective. We'll look at this together in our example today but you can make a little note. So for example, you could say adjective or N for noun or V for verb, just so that you know exactly what to listen out for. You might have more than one option for certain gaps and that's fine. Um, just know that doing this step will make you feel more comfortable and more at ease during the listening prompt. It'll give you a better guideline to follow. So these three steps will be done before the listening. Then you're going to want to follow the section notes. We talk about this in our overview lesson, and I'm going to show you what this is in just one minute, but we have four sections in the listening portion of the exam. And basically there are four different strategies that should be used for each section. So for example, if you are in section three, you should be following a certain strategy in terms of taking notes when you are listening to the prompt. 
and section one has a different strategy and so on and so forth. So there are different note-taking systems that really help your understanding of the listening prompt in each section. So I'll show you that in just one minute. And then lastly, of course, since you are writing out your answers, you want to be accurate. If the instructions call for no more than three words, make sure you are writing no more than three words, because if you do not follow that and write four words, for example, you will lose points. Also, we suggest writing in a very clear manner. So that means usually capital letters and legible handwriting, because someone, um, an examiner, is going to be reading your writing and assigning points. It would be a shame if your answer was correct, but it wasn't legible and therefore incorrect. So you should practice just making sure that you are accurate, that you understand the instructions, and that you are writing clearly. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the section that we will be in today. And our section is section three. And section three is a conversation. So not a monologue as you may see in sections two and four, but it's a conversation. And section three is a little bit tricky because that conversation can have up to four people. So potentially you may be asked to listen to four people speaking on an educational topic. Common examples could be enrolling in university courses or talking about an assignment at university or perhaps asking a career counselor for advice. Uh, all of the topics would be educational in nature. Now, for this reason, you don't want to lose track. Remember that the difficulty increases with each section. So in theory, section one is considered to be the most general topic quote unquote easiest for most people. And section four is usually the most difficult. So we're almost at section four and things get a little bit complicated. So you don't want to lose track with what is being said with these potential four people. And so it's really best to make a chart with different columns for each speaker. And we can do this quickly. I'll show you how to do it today in our example. But this is a great way to organize the information in section three because some questions might ask you to connect various ideas with different speakers. And it's hard, it can be difficult to remember all of these details with, uh, with speakers. And so the chart note-taking system is a great way to go. You can use my chart today as an example, but I would encourage you to practice and see what works best for you. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and look at our example for today. All right, so here we are with our questions. You'll see that this is section three, questions 27 through 30. So today we're going to be looking at four sentence completion questions. And of course, we have our instructions here, which we'll have to make note of. It says, complete the sentences below. Write no more than two words for each answer. So that is no more than two words. Very important to keep in mind. So like I said earlier in our explanation, the gap fills are at the end of the sentence. We do see one tiny exception in number 28, where we have the gap before the word skills. But for the most part, they are towards the end of the sentence. And this is actually a very common type of sentence completion question. Now, we're going to imagine that we have just heard the instructions. And so you can imagine that we have about 20 seconds to read our sentences, underline our keywords, and prepare ourselves. Keep in mind, in the actual listening exam and in the actual section three, you will have most likely two different types of question types. So you could assume that there would be another question type linked with this sentence completion type. That is the actual exam. Today we're going to really just focus all of our energy on this sentence completion question type. And we're going to take things a bit slower just so that you can get acclimated to the techniques and the skills that I'll be talking about. So first off, let's go ahead and just read the questions once through. This is step one. We're going to read the sentences and just get an understanding of what we are presented with today. 
So we have studying with the Open University demanded a great deal of studying and working at the same time improved Rachel's something skills. This is great because we already know that one of the speakers will most likely be called Rachel. This will help us with our chart in just a minute. The next question, it was helpful that the course was structured in something. And in the last sentence, she enjoyed meeting other students at something. So we have the idea that it's going to be an educational topic linked with a university, in this case, Open University. And we already know that someone is going to be called Rachel. Excellent. Now, this is the first step. I would encourage you to do your second step, which is underlining keywords at the same time, but I just want to make sure that we are clear and coherent for this example. So let's go ahead and read it again, and this time I will underline the keywords. Before I do that, I just want to remind you of keywords. What are they? Uh, basically, they are important words that will call out your attention while you listen to the prompt. So basically, just keep in mind that you never want to underline things like adverbs or pronouns or connectives or the verb to be. So for example, the word and you would never underline and the word the you would never underline. It's an article that doesn't really make a difference. And if you think of it this way, in the listening prompt, you're going to hear the word the and the word and and the word that, for example, many, many times. So underlining these types of words is not going to do you any favors. Think of keywords this way. If you were to eliminate them from the question or the answer options, you would basically be eliminating the main idea. And so you'd be leaving out all of the necessary information, okay? So we'll go through this together. We'll take a look at number 27. Studying with the Open University demanded a great deal of. Here I would underline studying because it is the action verb that is taking place, as well as Open University. So we're not sure if the listening prompt is going to feature different types of universities or different types of education. So I would go ahead and underline Open University because that's something that is very clear and will call out our attention. And then the last word I would underline is demanded because the Open University demanded something and we're going to have to listen for that word. I wouldn't necessarily underline a great deal of just because I think the listening prompt will make it clear with the word demand or perhaps even a synonym. So I'm just going to underline as little as possible. All right, number 28. Again, I'm going to underline studying and I'm going to underline working here because this is what sets number 28 apart from number 27. Here we're looking at studying and working, uh, and how this improved something, some type of skill of Rachel's. And we'll look at number 28 more closely when we look at the grammar. It's a very nice clue of, of the type of word we're going to be looking for. So here I have studying, working, and improved. I haven't underlined at the same time, just because for me, it's a bit obvious that these two things were done at the same time simultaneously, so I'm not going to underline that. I'm also not going to underline Rachel in this case because Rachel may be the speaker, so she might say this, and there really isn't any need to underline that if she's going to be the speaker. Number 29, it was helpful, is a great word here, that the course was structured. And here we're going to look at the way the course was organized or perhaps the way the course was structured. And this is the first time that we see something about a course. So I'm going to definitely underline that. And the last one, she enjoyed meeting other students. And here, this is something positive, so something she enjoyed. I'm going to definitely underline that. The verb is meeting, and we need to know what or who she was meeting, so I would definitely underline students. Other is not important because we know that Rachel is a student, and so it's obvious that she's going to be meeting other students. That's just too obvious, and we don't need to confuse ourselves with an extra key word.
So basically here we should understand a couple of things. Now we know that section three can have up to four speakers and we don't know how many speakers we're going to have at this point, but we can say at least two because we have one name and we see that she comes up in number 30 as well. So she's going to be someone who is going to be in the transcript and then obviously someone else will be speaking with her. So we can be prepared for at least two speakers when writing our chart, which we'll do after our grammar step. Another thing we should keep in mind is that the topic definitely will involve school and education in the university setting. So that just confirms our information about section three. All right, so we've done our first and second steps, which ideally will be done together in your other practice and your additional test preparation for listening. But now we're going to look at step three, understanding the grammar. And this is a great help. It's a potential time saver as well, and it can really help you with these keywords. Basically, what we're going to do very quickly is skim over these sentences again and think about the possible words that could be missing in these sentences. And I mean the parts of speech. What type of word should we be looking out for? Now, you don't necessarily have to write out all the different possibilities. Like I said earlier, use a couple of abbreviations. You could use N for noun, V for verb, things like this. And so starting with number 27, it says, studying with the Open University demanded a great deal of, and so I know that this is going to be something. So I'm going to write STH for something. That's my own personal abbreviation. You can use this or you can think of something that makes more sense to you, but it's something and it's going to be some sort of maybe a trait or something with personality maybe. So this could be, uh, for example, skill or it demanded a great deal of patience, perseverance. It could be, this is just my immediate thought. In any case, it's most likely going to be a noun. So you can write out noun or you could just write N to save some time. And this will just help you kind of verify your answers once you write down your answers as well. Now, this doesn't mean that the answer will definitely be a trait or a personality trait. It could be something, just a simple noun, it could be something like money. Okay, it demanded a great deal of money. Um, but just thinking about it before you hear the listening prompt will really get your mind into the topic and you'll become more focused once the listening prompt is played. So it's really great to, to do this step. Let's look at number 28. It says studying and working at the same time improved Rachel's blank skills. Now, I love this one. It's quite an easy question because once you see that there's a gap right before a noun, you can rest assured that it's most likely going to be an adjective because adjectives describe the noun. So this really clears up our critical thinking when it comes to this specific question. So it's going to be a type of skill. So I'm going to write here that type, okay, and I'm going to just write ADJ, my own personal abbreviation for adjective. Now let's go to 29. It says, it was helpful that the course was structured in, here it's going to be some sort of organization method, how the course is blocked off or how she took the course. In any case, it's going to be a noun again. And then the last question we have is she enjoyed meeting other students at, and this is also going to be another noun. I would say maybe a place or a type of event. Okay, these are probably our two options that are going to be most probable. In any case, we can listen for a noun again. So just looking at all of these, we have most nouns and one adjective. Again, this is not foolproof. This is just a guess. This is just to increase our chances of listening and getting the correct answer. Uh, perhaps, like I said, in number 27, we might get a different answer entirely. It might not have anything to do with personality. And that's fine. You're not going to be graded for your guesses, but they'll just help you get focused and utilize your time wisely before you hear the prompt. 
So this is all of our preparation work. And now, as we listen to the prompt, we're going to take notes in our chart system. This is really helpful, especially for question types that will ask you to connect various details and information with various speakers. This specific question type today isn't asking us to do that, but it's great to practice our chart note-taking skills anyway. And if you have some time before the listening prompt is played, after you've done your prep work, you could draft a quick, quick chart with at least a couple of columns, and you could even put in Rachel before the prompt is played and get a head start on your chart. Now I'm just going to put in a chart that I've already drafted since I'm here on the computer. And for you with the pen and paper, it's probably going to be quicker to quickly, quickly draft your own chart. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure that each speaker has their own designated space that you can write abbreviations, arrows, and some points that will help you in your questions. So next I'm going to show you my chart and then we're going to listen to the prompt. All right, so I've made my screen a bit larger just so that we have enough room to write out our chart. But as you see here, I've just made a very simple chart with two columns for now. If there are more than two speakers, I can easily add a column and you could easily do that as well with pen and paper. So for now, I'm just going to start with two. And as soon as I hear names or if I hear that one is a man and the other is a woman, I'll write man or woman, M or W perhaps. Or if I hear a British accent versus an American accent, I can quickly write the type of accent just so that I can differentiate the speakers and make it easier for myself to understand who is speaking. So we're going to listen to the prompt now. I'm going to take my notes based on the keywords. I'm going to think about potential answers as well. I'm going to keep these parts of speech in mind and I would encourage you to do the same thing. Remember, you don't need to necessarily write as I write, but just find a chart note-taking system that works for you. All right, so let's get ready and listen. The other thing I wanted to ask you was, did you find it hard studying with the Open University? You mean because you're studying on your own most of the time? Mm. Well, it took me a while to get used to it. I found I needed to maintain a high level of motivation because it's so different from school. There's no one saying, why haven't you written your assignment yet? And that sort of thing. Oh, dear. You'll learn it, Paul. Another thing was that I got very good at time management because I had to fit time for studying around a full-time job. Well, I'm hoping to change to working part-time, so that'll help. Mm. What makes it easier is that the degree is made up of modules, so you can take time off between them if you need to. It isn't like a traditional three- or four-year course where you've got to do the whole thing of it in one go. Oh, that's good, because I'd like to spend six months traveling next year. Huh, it's all right for some. <laughs> then, even though you're mostly studying at home, remember you've got tutors to help you, and from time to time there are summer schools. They usually last a week. They're great, because you meet all the other people struggling with the same things as you. Oh. I've made some really good friends that way. Sounds good. Uh, so how do I... Now, I've made our chart a bit bigger, just so that it's all clear for us. And you'll notice that we had two speakers. So we had Paul, and obviously the woman was Rachel. And we saw this in number 28. Again, we only heard a section of the listening prompt. So perhaps earlier on in the directions and earlier in the text, you may have heard the instructor or the examiner in the tape script mention Paul and Rachel explicitly. For now, we can just have Paul in one column and obviously Rachel in the other. Now, I hope you were able to follow along and take notes. These are just my notes here that make things a bit easier for me. So you see that things are not uh, capitalized, grammatically correct even. Things are spelled in my own abbreviations. So for example, months here, I think the computer wanted to change it to maths. Obviously, with pen and paper, this will be a lot easier. But typing, these are just things that I use. You'll see I use a lot of dashes and slashes and ampersands, things that you would not write in your test booklet, 
but just something that would make it clearer for you. These were words that stuck out to me. We'll look at this in just one minute. In order to go over the answers, I'm going to include the transcript that we listened to right here. Okay, and there we see the transcript for the portion that we listened to. So if we start with number 27, let's go through the answers and the explanations. We see here we were looking for a noun. So studying demanded a great deal of something. And to me, it was quite obvious that motivation was talked about because Rachel said she had a high degree of motivation. And high could be a synonym for a great deal of. So if you were thinking motivation, you are correct. It demanded a great deal of motivation. Let's look at where this was in the transcript. Obviously, it was right here with Rachel, where she said, it took me a while to get used to it. I found I needed to maintain a high level of motivation. So high level can be a synonym for a great deal of because it's so different from school. We know that they're talking about Open University because this keyword was mentioned by Paul in the very beginning. Another keyword is studying because Rachel talked about studying immediately after. So studying with the Open University demanded a great deal of motivation. So we can go ahead and write motivation. And of course I would suggest writing in all capital letters just so that everything is clear for the examiner who is looking over your paper. So great. We see it's a noun and demanded was not necessarily in the text, but another synonym for demanded could be needed. All right, let's go to the next one. We have number 28. Studying and working at the same time improved Rachel's. And here I have the answer. It's time management. And so let's look at the answer. She says, another thing was that I got very good at time management. So I can go ahead and underline that because I had to fit time for studying around a full-time job. So notice full-time job can be a synonym for working and we have studying our keyword here as well. And time management, if you have studied your vocabulary beforehand, is a type of skill. So you should be able to fit these two things together. So even though she doesn't necessarily say that she's talking about skills, it's quite obvious that time management is a skill. And the fact that studying and working are both mentioned here is a clear giveaway that number 28 is time management. So let's go ahead and write that here as well. And of course, the little dash here that I'm using is optional. So you could write time management as two words or just one word or with the dash, they would both be considered correct. And let's go to our next question, number 29. It was helpful that the course was structured in, and so again, always with Rachel, I see that it was easier, so this could be a synonym for helpful, was that the course was structured in modules. So it's a type of structure, it's an organization method. I would go ahead and write modules. And let's go ahead and look at the bolded statement that gives us a clue here. Now, Rachel said, what makes it easier is that the degree is made up of modules. So there you go. Made up is a great synonym for structured and degree is similar to course. So these are also other synonyms that you should look out for. The last statement is she enjoyed meeting other students at, and remember we looked at a place or an event and here we were talking about summer school because she mentioned that she went to summer school and was able to make friends this way. So here in this case, friends is a synonym for students. And obviously if she made friends, she was meeting people. Let's go ahead here and look at the statement. She says, even though you're mostly studying at home, remember you've got tutors to help you and from time to time, there are summer schools. They usually last a week. They're great because you meet all the other people struggling with the same things as you. And then she talks about friends. So the other keywords here, people and meeting, I did not write, but I did listen out for. And in any case, it led me to the correct answer, summer school.
Now, since the actual transcript has it listed as summer schools, you have two options here. You could write summer school, just one, or you could write summer schools with the S. So in this case, you'll see that the correct answer has this uh, parenthesis here with schools because this is optional. So it would be correct in the plural form since that is how it is referred to in the transcript or in its singular form. Same thing with this time management option. In answer books, you may see parentheses around this dash because it is optional. Perfect. And so there we have it. So we have all of our answers in red on the left, and we have our bold statements here that give way to the answers. Now you notice how we were pretty much correct. Noun for motivation, adjective for time management to describe skills, modules, it's a noun, and summer school is also a noun. So this did help us listen out for correct types of words. This is very helpful. And notice how here, I took a majority of my notes in the Rachel column. Paul, in this section, was really just asking questions in order to keep the conversation going and lead us to find these answers. So in this case, I only used Rachel as my source of information. And of course, as you are listening to the transcript, feel free to make notes by your questions as well. Make notes in your outline if that's clear for you. Just make sure that either way, you are listening for your keywords, you are paying attention to grammar, and you are writing clearly. Excellent job. Let's go ahead and wrap up this lesson. All right, I hope that cleared up some doubts or some problem areas you were experiencing with the sentence completion listening questions. And now we're just going to go ahead and wrap up this lesson just to go over the most important do's and don'ts when approaching this question type. So first off, you want to always utilize your time. Remember, you're going to have a couple different question types per section. So you want to quickly underline your keywords, read your questions or sentences, and think about your grammar. So remember that order, and also remember the order of the questions. So they're most likely going to come in order. And for this reason, you'll need to find a chart-making technique that works for you. In any case, try to get through the prep work quickly and find a technique that works for you as you listen. Of course, you want to study up on your grammar before you take the test so that you know exactly what you should be putting in these gaps. Uh, it would be awful if you just didn't know if a noun or an adjective or a verb were to follow because that really opens up all of these possibilities for words that can be put into your gaps. So the more you are an expert at grammar, the easier the sentence completion question type will be. And of course, at the end, you want to write clearly. We talked about how it would be such a shame if you were to lose points for writing the correct answer in an illegible way or perhaps not following the instructions as you should. So pay attention to these do's. And lastly, your don'ts. Obviously, don't waste time in the beginning. You want to use those 20 seconds from when the instructions are read up until the listening prompt to your advantage. And for that reason, you don't want to focus on just one thing. So you want to listen while you are writing in your chart. You want to listen and think about your keywords. Always multitask, and this will take some practice before you actually come to the exam. So don't forget to practice that. Also, don't leave anything blank. This is really something you should never do because you're definitely not going to get any points. If for some reason you did not catch an answer to a question, but you guess, you have a higher probability of getting a point that way. If you leave it blank, you definitely won't get any points. So if you have time afterwards, just put something in your best guess. And of course, like I said earlier, you do not want to write the incorrect amount of words. So always think up to two words or up to three words. Today we did exactly this. We had mostly one word answers. We did have one answer that had two words, summer school, but we were able to follow these directions. Well, that's 